Hello and welcome boys, girls and otherwise, you know who it is, it's your boy King Demps and you know what time it is, it's time for some scores on the bloody doors. So if you don't know the drill by now, where the hell have you been, you're not one of the cool kids, we score these teams, we grade them on a scale of S to F, F, yeah, I think that's what I do. And uh, yeah, let's just get into it from the bottom up. So this is obviously for the Blast Premier Fall groups. And first up, we have Complexity. Now, you might think Complexity, they finished dead last. Oh my God, classic Complexity. Lol, NACS is shit. But actually, Complexity made some changes recently, or a change, bringing in Halzerk for Junior. And they looked so, so, so much better already at this event. Start off with a win against Na'Vi. Doesn't matter if it's best of one. Doesn't matter if it's the first game of the new season. Okay, it matters a little bit that Na'Vi have head trick, but this is still a pretty solid win. I dare say the old complexity would have just got squished, even if Na'Vi did have head trick in the lineup. And then they ran Liquid very close, and we've seen that Liquid with Yekandar are a very solid team. Absolutely battered by Na'Vi in the rematch, so it takes a little bit of the shine off this one. And it was a repeat of the same map, so having the score flipped on you so convincingly is a little bit bizarre, and it does sully the first result a little bit. And then obviously when we get to this single elimination bracket, they were pretty comfortably handled by OG, but made a decent fight of the ancient map. Now, complexity are going to get... They're going to get a C minus because, in fact, no, fuck it. They're going to get a C plus because this is about in line with my expectations for them, like to finish last. And there's only so much of a decent score you can give them for finishing last. But just how much more they're competitive, they already look with Halzerk in the lineup. I can actually see some sort of proof of concept that this lineup can go on and be decent. And it's unlocked some of the other players. It's not like Halzerk is going hard and carrying on his own. Grim looks a bit better. Floppy looks a little bit better. You know, JT has still been decent um, at times. And it just generally, this roster looks like it actually has somewhere it can go and that it might be able to be a little bit more competitive on European soil than the previous lineup was. So C plus for complexity. Evil Geniuses. Yeah, Evil Geniuses is a little bit more like the same old, same old. Uh, I'm just going to give them a D because I don't expect anything better from Evil Geniuses, really. But I didn't see much promise from this new version of the lineup. It was still pretty disappointing. Brushed aside pretty convincingly by FaZe. Brushed aside pretty convincingly by Big. And then they do pick up a map off Ninjas in Pajamas, largely off the back of Automatic. And Automatic in general actually looks pretty decent at the moment for EG. He's the one player where you're like, okay, yeah, this guy can do some damage in European events. This version of Nip, not too convinced by it. So yeah, I'm just going to give Evil Geniuses a D and not talk too much about them. Like everything I've said previously on them pretty much still applies. There doesn't seem to be much of a proof of concept with this roster. Marginally better than the old one because the old one would have just got banged out, not won a single map and like not gotten to double digits in any of the others. So like D plus, they can have a plus on that D, but yeah, I'm still not impressed or convinced by Evil Geniuses. Still think Cirque and Breezy are washed. Now we got to talk about Big and Big. Yeah, the start of this season since the player break has been really disappointing for them. Obviously, we've seen what happened to them at EPL. Um, they just finished their group on Sunday and did not qualify. And then here in this event prior, they... Okay, so narrow loss against Heroic, not the end of the world. We know how decent this Heroic lineup can be, having only swapped one player refresh for Yabby. And Heroic, they're not a side to, to sniff at, all right? They're definitely not a side to sniff at. So not the end of the world, losing two narrow best of ones to Heroic. Obviously beat Evil Geniuses, but in my books, you don't get a huge amount for credit for that. Then they just immediately get 2 owed by Big, uh, by G2, sorry, pretty convincingly and go out of the tournament. I think this has got to be a, a D for Big because they probably would have been hoping to be competitive and threaten to qualify. Like, they should be looking at complexity and evil geniuses and saying, yeah, they're definitely cannon fodder. They should even be looking at people like Nip, Heroic, maybe even Astralis, Vitality, OG. They should be looking at a lot of these teams and thinking, we haven't really made any changes. Bringing Keto back in isn't like a massive switch up in the lineup. 
Um, admittedly, losing a long-serving member in the form of Tizian can, like, cause some problems. There's definitely, like, logic to the idea that Big have room to grow and maybe this lineup can perform better. But what we've seen so far... Yeah, not not convinced. Searson needs to find a way to produce more regularly on land because he's so disappointing on land compared to online. And this event for Big was not a very promising start to the season, I think. They're going to get a D. Not going to talk too much more about the Germans. So, Astralis. This one will be pretty disappointing for Astralis, I think, because Astralis have looked generally improved since sort of Pinnacle last year uh, or last season sorry i should say coming into this season they're probably feeling a little bit better with themselves their t sides no longer look like an automatic complete disaster they generally look like the structure there to their team is a little bit better and fits a little bit more but we've still got the same problems with astralis they massively rely on blame f and we don't get enough big performances outside of blame f Obviously lose in the opener to Nip, but win the rematch. Beat OG, beat Vitality. It's looking pretty decent if you look at like the group portion of it. Then they get reasonably comfortably 2 would Like, okay, it's 16-12. It's not like a stomp, but it felt like OG were in control of these games and going to win them. And then they lose 2-1 to FaZe in the last chance stage. You can say that's a pretty tough draw. I think I'm going to give Astralis a C- minus because we saw again like I talk about this a lot, talking about a proof of concept. And what I mean is when you watch the games that Astralis played, it, it looked like there was a structure and a plan in place and a blueprint that they can go on forward with into future games and tournaments and grow and have decent results. Decent map wins here. Obviously disappointing in the two series. I'm going to give Astralis a C minus because they were at least competitive and got to within, like they had two chances. They got to a, a good spot to qualify. So a C minus, a little bit disappointing not to qualify. I would say the only locked in ones were kind of like FaZe and Na'Vi. And then I would say like G2 and Liquid and Vitality were probably pretty favored to go through. So Astralis, I wouldn't say were like amongst the, the one, two, three, four, five. Amongst the five, I'd be like, I can't count six that I definitely thought would qualify, or like if I was ordering a, a six in likelihood of qualifying, or, or all of these teams even, Astralis would have been somewhere around that seven to six mark, so definitely wasn't guaranteed. C minus, I think, is fair. Moving on. Heroic are really difficult to gauge at the moment. It, it's hard to know what swapping only one player is going to do to a team, because you'd think sometimes it's going to make barely any difference at all. Heroic still seem to be finding their feet, but it's not as if there there's no signs of life. Like obviously they win a best of one here against FaZe. We know FaZe saved their best for the biggest games, so you're not playing against the world number one phase. I would say sometimes in games like these, you're playing against a phase that's a little bit less motivated, a little bit less geared up to succeed. But still some decent map wins here from Heroic. We obviously go into this this next stage. They get battered by Liquid. Liquid make them look like a bunch of amateurs. Honestly, that was like super one-sided. And then it's pretty disappointing losing to Nip here. This version of Nip is not good. It's not even around anymore, obviously. They've just signed Alexi B for Plopsky. Yeah, I think that is where it gets really disappointing for Heroic. The fact that when it came to like these knockout games, the most important ones, they kind of crumbled which has been Heroic's problem in the past. So it's not great if you're a Heroic fan looking forward. The one positive is that Yabby had a really good game here and Yabby performing better on LAN is the main reason he was brought in for refresh. So there is like some signs of life. I'm actually going to give them a, a C plus. Again, if I was ordering these teams before the event, would have had Heroic probably in the bottom six, not to qualify. So the fact that they were very competitive until they kind of got here, in which case it was a bit disappointing. But we can see some signs of life from Heroic. It's early doors yet still with Yabby. I think Heroic are the kind of team that the way they play, especially their kind of like often chaotic approach in certain rounds, especially with mid-rounding, I think it takes time for people to get used to each other in that scenario and to fit Yabby in seamlessly. So... I'm not panicking about Heroic just yet. I'm also not super excited about Heroic just yet. Uh, let's wait and see.
Next up is Vitality. Yeah, they're getting a D for this because it was disappointing. However, they're going to get a D plus because I think we saw a lot of signs for Vitality that can be seen as really positive going forward. They win their first two best of ones. Very narrow loss to Astralis here. Very tight Mirage where Farley like outperforms, to be honest, and goes a bit ham. And Zewu, who, you know, has basically started the season on a fucking tear, had a quieter game. So, you know, understandable that one. And it's very narrow. A series win over G2, very positive. A decent series against Vitality, who have simple, uh, sorry, a decent series against Na'Vi, who had simple back in the lineup. Very promising. This will be the disappointing result. It's a very, very tight series here. All three of the maps could have gone either way. At the end of the day, I think it was just G2 having a little bit more strength and depth on the fragging front because Sphinx didn't have his best series here, whereas Magus and Zewu were doing very, very well. Whereas you kind of look here, Nico, Hunter and Monacy all had their moments and had strong showings throughout the series. And it was enough to get G2 over the line. I think Vitality have to have been feeling like they should qualify from this event. And so it has to be below a C, in my opinion. But it's a D plus because it's not that bad. They were competitive. If my criteria were a bit different, I might put them in a C because I thought it looked really good. And it matched expectations in terms of how Vitality looked overall. They looked pretty strong. And had the draw been different and they hadn't had to play like, you know, Na'Vi and then G2, maybe if they'd have had like Astralis or OG or Heroic or Liquid, like whatever. If they'd have had a different matchup in this round, you might have backed them to win it. And maybe even if they had a different matchup in this round, you might have backed them to win it. So I'm all right with Vitality moving forward. This version of the lineup looks so much better than the Masuta version. D+, plus, but that's like a, a positive D+. Plus. It's like if I could add a little thumbs up to it, that's what it would get. G2, Gamers 2, new home of Hooksy and JKS. I don't, I don't know why that voice came out, but it did. Moving swiftly on. G2 had like a wobbly start, right? They lose to Na'Vi in a best of one. A Na'Vi without simple. Kind of disappointing. Hooksy and JKS kind of shit in the bed, to be honest, individually. Both of these Mirage, game, blah, 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 Mirage games I looked at very closely. Mid-rounding was a problem. And the performances of JKS and Hooksy were a problem. They were both sucking a fat bag. Yeah, these ratings, they're not good. And the, it was as bad as it looked. Then you come through to uh, this knockout stage. They get a convincing 2-0 win over Big. Cool. monacy has been looking really good at the start of this G2 renaissance. Hunter and Nico have also been performing pretty well, but Monacy in particular has been balling in general. Then they, mm, I say narrowly, they squish Virg, uh, Nuke, uh, and they get squished on Vertigo and Inferno. So it's one of those series where you're like, ah, I mean, was it that close? Like, we, we battered our map. But we or we batted the map we won, but we lost the other two. I don't know. Don't know how happy you are as a team in that series. But when it came to business time in the last chance stage, they got the job done. What was super, super nice to see about this G2 performance is not only did they qualify, but they got better and better as the event went on. And that is exactly what it felt like watching these two opening games of G2s, these two opening Mirage games. It felt like, honestly, the, the, the proof of concept, I'm going to stop overusing that term, don't worry, but it looked like they had a blueprint there. It looked like Hooksy's calling was, was solid if at times the mid-rounding was a bit suspect, and they ironed these issues out more and more as the event went on. I'm really excited about this G2 moving forward. I think it can be really good. Hooksy needs to find a way to be more impactful more often, which he showed at EPL. Obviously, their group just finished, and he was looking better as an individual, much, much better. So there's definite signs of promise from this G2 roster. I'm going to give it a B plus because it was a qualification, and it looked even better as it went on. Yeah, I'm liking this G2 roster so far. They get a B plus for this performance. NIP. Oh, it's going to be hard to do this for NIP because we've already seen the fact that this roster has been blowed up and they bought Alexi Beam. They get one best of one win here over Astralis and then lose to Astralis anyway. They lose to Vitality here. There's no major blowouts. 
you know, this isn't particularly close. And if you look at the ratings, you can see who was in control of this game. Beat Evil Geniuses 2-1. Eh, don't get much credit for me for that. Lose to Liquid 2 with a very tight mirage. But again, I think Liquid probably should have won Oving Pass a bit more convincingly. And I, I would have backed Liquid if it had gone to a third map. I don't know what the third map was. And I, I see me to open it up. And then they beat Heroic. You kind of look at it and you're like, the one really good team they played was Liquid. And they lost. And they got a pretty kind draw here getting Heroic, who clearly need time to settle. I think I have to give a nip a, a B, because they exceeded my expectations in qualifying. Um, um, yeah, there's not much point talking more about it, because it's a fucking new roster now. Nip get a B for this, but I wasn't convinced by this iteration of Nip, and I'm not surprised that they made changes. They get a B. Phase clan! Phase up. Wait, phase up. Phase up. There's like two ways you can do it, isn't it? Yeah, then there's that way, which is dumb. This way's better. Anyway, phase. What did they get, man? They qualified. They lost the best of one to Heroic here. They then lose a the series here to OG, so it's not great. They beat Astralis 2 1. I'm just going to give them a C. There's not much to say about this phase run. Like, they won the games they absolutely had to. They were disappointing overall, I would say. But phase, we only ever get their best in the big moments and at the big tournaments. So I'm not really surprised. They're not like a Na'Vi were last year, where their, their time at the top is absolutely imperious. Every single game they win, they're just crushing everyone. It's not like that for phase. It's more like... They do what they need to and they conserve their energy in these type of events and in the earlier portions of tournaments. And it's when we hit those playoffs, it's when we get to like crunch time, that's when we see the real phase. So I think this is just a C from phase because it's just getting the job done. It's what they needed to do. There's not much more to honestly say about it. They get themselves a C, they qualified, they did the job, they met expectations. Next up is the boy dem OG. OG are going to get uh, an A minus for this one because they look fucking good. Group stage it is a whoopsie. It's like, oh, OK, we kind of shit the bed here. But then knockout stage comes. Bam, 2-0 complexity. Sweep them aside. Dexter slapping. Fiku slapping. Flames is slapping. Bam, phase. Best team in the world. Uh-uh. Two to one. They grind this one out as well. This isn't like an OG game where they just pop off individually. If you look at these ratings, they had to grind this bad boy out, but they did. And it is a really positive result, this one. I think this is the best result they achieved. And then they put Astralis to bed. It's not like super convincing, but it's reasonably comfortable. They were always going to win this game. Flames is banging again. Dexter's banging again. These are the two that I want to see. Oh, love you, Dexter. Mwah. As I was saying, Fiku, uh, Flames and Dexter are the guys that I want to see popping off. I'm going to give them an A because when it came to it, the series players where they are, uh, A minus, we'll do A minus because of this wobble here. But A, when the series started, they banged, they beat the number one team in the world, they beat Astralis convincingly. Sick work, OG. I love what I'm seeing. I think the personnel just fits so much better with the loose Nexus style. They're all young guns. They're all guys that will take their own moves into their own hands and do stuff off their own back. And that is exactly what you need. And they've got a very, very high skill ceiling. All of these players can frag, even Nexa. Yeah, I'm looking forward to OG for the rest of the year. And for this bad boy, what did I say? A minus. That's what they get. Liquid. Liquid. I think they just got to get an A. Like, really, you know, BG2, bam, B complexity, bam, lose to Na'Vi very convincingly without simple. That one, yeah, that that's sus. That's a suspect one. But we move on to the single elimination bracket and they 2-0 nip and they 2-0 heroic really convincingly. I think it's just got to be an A because the only map they lost was to Na'Vi. And then apart from that, they marched through this tournament event without much trouble. We all know how it's looking now that Yekindar's joined the lineup. He is a beast in his own right. He's putting up mega ratings in so many series, but he's massively unlocked Elige, as we can see. Elige top fragging, 
it, Leeds didn't do so good in this game. But as you can see, in general, Liquid are playing really well. Naf is just Naf. He's always going to do his shit. OC is developing into a very fine AWPA. And we know what Yekindar and Elige are doing. I'm sold on this Liquid lineup. I really am. I think Yekindar has also changed the way they approach the game a little bit. And I think that was actually one of Liquid's core fundamental problems. That combo of Elige and Nitro, I think, leads to very unimaginative and single dimensional thinking in terms of calling. And I think Yekindar has come and shaken that up. And he has brought enough respect with him that Liquid have allowed him to shake things up. So Liquid, A, thumbs up. NACS is back, baby. And last, but by no means least, we have Na'Vi. What can we say about Na'Vi at this event? It's hard to, like, knock them and, like, not give them a good grade because, you know, they, they didn't lose. Uh, I mean, they did lose this opening best of one, but eh. No simple opening games. We know what Na'Vi like to do in opening games. They like to sleep. They like to have a little nap, and then they wake up later, and they bang. What what do we give them? They again they felt like they grew into the event a bit. Simple only arrived for the end. I think we just gotta give them a B. Like again, it's so hard to talk about this event too seriously for a lot of teams, and then other teams it feels more important. I think with this Navi, Simple was just being chilling for the group, decided not to turn up, rocks up for one playoff series, tops the boards as they go through. It's a B, it's expectations met. It's expectations met comfortably, which is why it's, I think, a, a B, a solid B grading. But you can't read too much into it. I can't get too excited about what Na'Vi have shown here. They just, similar to FaZe, they got the job done. It was a little bit more convincing than FaZe because they didn't drop a series to a team they should beat or they should feel like they should be beating. Am I being hard? Nah, we'll give Na'Vi a C. I think I'm being harsh giving Na'Vi a at phase a C if I'm going to give Na'Vi a B. So I'll just give Na'Vi and Phase both Cs. Maybe we'll upgrade them to C pluses, but it, it, there's just not too much you can take from it. It's not super convincing. There are some signs where you're like, mm, uh, you know, they dropped that opener to complexity, but it was without simple. Yeah, all those reasons, C plus, can't read too much into it. And I'm going to upgrade Phase to a C plus as well, because similar reasons. I can't read too much into these results, but they got the job done. And they won when they needed to. That's it for this scores on dead doors. Let me know your grades. Like, what, what are you giving these teams? Have I been harsh? Have I been generous? Or have I, as I suspect, just been correct? I'm just right. If you did not like it, you're a pleb. Get out of here. Like and subscribe. I think I already said that. Tell your mates. Love you all. Long time.